Hey y'all, it's TX Stamp and Sharon. Welcome to Technique Thursday. Um, tonight is Thursday, April the 7th. Oh, we are we are just flying by the weeks here. April the 7th, and I am live at 7 p.m. Central. I am so happy to do my technique class. I I start preparing for it like two days before. I'm like, do I have everything? Okay, do I have everything? I just, I get excited and I can't wait to share with y'all. Now, the technique class is a free class that I offer here on YouTube. And it, you know, some of the techniques I do, y'all may already know them. You're like, oh yeah, I know that one. I get that. Some of them you don't know. And the whole point of my technique series is to give you a reference library for you to have to refer to instead of trying to search Google or search Pinterest. And maybe you don't know the name of the of the technique because some of these techniques have two or three different names. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's just been it's been one of those fun projects that I have wanted to do for years. And I'm just thrilled that I have been doing them. So and y'all have too. Y'all have been enjoying them. So I want to say, oh, Barbie ordered her long sleeve Creative 8 shirt. <laughs> she saw me wearing a Creative 8 t-shirt. She thought it was a sweatshirt. And she was like, oh, can we get sweatshirts? I said, no, it's a long sleeve t-shirt. So um, I want to welcome everyone who has joined me early. I start setting up, I don't know, sometimes about 30 minutes, get all the cables and everything connected um, to do my live. And it just cracks me up that at 630, y'all are on here already chatting. I'm like, oh my goodness gracious. So I told my daughter that I said, oh, I got to get back over there. They're already chatting. And she's like, they're having like happy hour before the show starts. I go, I guess so. <laughs> so welcome, welcome everyone. Hello, Donna Baker. Um, Margaret, you can order them. They are on the Etsy store. Um, I will have that. So let's just talk about the Creative 8 Retreat because we're wandering off on the t-shirts and the long sleeve shirts. So the Creative 8 Retreat is put on by four ladies, me, Jackie Bullheis, Connie Stewart, and Brandy Cox. We have the Spring Creative 8 Retreat coming up at the end of April, April 29th and 30th. You can still register. Uh, we had an early bird special last weekend and some, I've been getting lots of emails. Can I still register? Can I still register? Absolutely, you can register. Um, you can register on my blog. And the um, if you're watching the replay, <clears throat> excuse me, you will be able to find the link to my blog below the video. And um, you can register. And on the blog website, I will put the information about the t-shirts and you can go and look and you can shop for a short sleeve t-shirt or a long sleeve t-shirt, whichever one you want, Margaret. Uh, Bonnie White says she loves the retreats. Everybody has really enjoyed the retreats. Um, we love putting them on. And every time we always have like a, a powwow session, what can we do better? What can we do different? And this time, this retreat, while we still have the private Facebook group, if you want to share your creations over there, you can find everything super easy on my website. You have to have a password. Um, after you register, you get a password to find everything in one place. It's all nice and tidy. You do not have to be on Facebook. Everything is going to be uh, uh, done live on YouTube. So it's going to be super fun. So we are so excited. Um, Mary says, thank you for responding to me about the retreat. Absolutely, Mary. You're so welcome. Um, okay, so Heart of Hope made it for the live. We're so glad you're here. I want. I do want to welcome everybody. We have about 186. Um, where are my roses? Hubby's been under the weather and he hasn't gone and bought me any. So I know it's looking very very bare over there, isn't it? <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and get started. I think I've kind of chatted enough so that um, those of you who got the message, you got you notified by YouTube that I was live and you're like, oh, I got to get on um, and put me on your TV. Who's got me on the TV? 
I always think that's so funny. I did go and put myself on the TV because I just wanted to see how big it was. I was like, oh, wait, that's way too big. That's way too big. My projects, y'all can see, but me, that's way too big. So, all right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so I have my retreat. Uh, my retreat. <laughs> we were talking about the retreat. I have my technique book. Um, I'm just going to move my mouse out of the way. So, like I said, this has been a dream of mine for a long time to have, um, whoops, let's see here. Let's do this. That puts me down there. Okay. To have a reference book for you. Now, I designed the um, uh, PDFs, the, the project, uh, the idea sheets for you to cut apart and put in the album that you can find on my website. Okay. Um, but you don't have to. You can leave them whole, print them for eight and a half by 11. That's our, that's our index. You can leave them whole and, and keep them a whole sheet and put them in a three ring binder. Okay. So I do get some questions about the, um, some of the uh, pocket pages, how they're form, how they're formatted. By the way, I do would like to say, these are now back in stock. I ordered some more. <laughs> um, we depleted Stampin' Up! stock with this technique series because everybody's loving it. So um, these are now back in stock. And I highly recommend you buy at least two packs if you're doing more than one month's worth of techniques. This is our techniques card making uh, class number seven. So that brings us tonight. After we're done, we will have 40 techniques in our book. Okay. Um, I was looking at the list today because I'm already planning May's technique class. I think we've got a year's worth. I, I really do. I do. So anyway. Um, okay. So the first thing is when you buy the packages, there is a solid or open piece that doesn't have any dividers in it. And that's what I use for my index. And I just continue on. And every time I start a new series, I just add it to um, the front of the book. So, you know, you can kind of look down and you go, yeah, I want to do the watercolor pencil blending technique. That's what I want to do. Um, Lavina is asking how many there will be. Lavina, I think 100. Mm -hmm. Pretty close. I'm kind of weeding some of them out because some of them um, you might think, well, that's kind of like the other one. Oh, we didn't talk about my nails. We were talking about my nails during the chat. And I said, wait until I tell y'all the color. So Stampin' Up's got new in colors coming out. Look at that. Pretty darn close to Orchid Oasis. This is a new in color. And I think... I think what I'm going to do is take these little, this is another one, take these little cards to the nail place and have him match my nails for each new in color. Isn't that fun? Look at that parakeet party. I'm like, oh, I don't know. That's pretty bright on the nails, but we'll try it. We'll try it. We'll see what happens. All right. So as you're turning the pages, so the dividers, um, the pages are divided like this, okay? But then every now and then you come up with four on the page and you're like, well, what am I supposed to do with that? So I've left this here on purpose because I want to show y'all. Um, so when you start looking back, let me find one. These are all the techniques we've been doing. So much fun. I've enjoyed going back through and looking at some of them. Of course, now I can't find the one I want. We'll get it. Come on. Okay. I want to show you a way to do it so that you don't waste any of these little pockets is what I'm trying to say. I should have put a bookmark on it. <laughs> oh gosh. I know I have some in here. Um, hmm. Okay. Well, so much for my illustration. That's so silly. Okay, here we go. <laughs> So I put the instructions here and then I have the picture and what I used um, for that technique. I have them going across. 
Okay. So that's how I do those four on a page. That's how I'm doing that one. So uh, Kate says she wants to do Tahitian Tide. I think Tahitian Tide would be a pretty one. I do. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started with tonight's techniques. Our first one is going to be faux tile. Now, when you print these, let me go back over here. You've got your welcome page. And I do tell you to print them at full size on your printer for best results. Everything will fit nicely if you choose to use the album and the pages, okay? So, but on the last page, where is it? There is for the cover if you choose to print that. Now, this is all one document. So if you already have this and you, um, <laughs> Thelma is saying, don't weed out any techniques. If it takes me two years, she wants me to keep on going. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> if you already have this page, when you tell your printer to print, just don't print that page. There's no reason to waste the ink. Okay. So. Uh, Tahitian Tide is very pretty when you showed it to us. Yes, Tahitian Tide is very pretty. All right, let's move all this out of the way. Oh, wait until y'all see the cards I've been making with those new in-color card stocks. Mm -hmm. Very pretty, very pretty. All right, so our first one, and we're going to do this so that we have a, um, a tile stamp, if you would. Um, the first one we're doing is the faux tile technique. This is a super fun technique. So if you're watching the replay or as you're doing these techniques at home, because I want you to do these techniques. Of course, Harley's decided to bark. Um, I want you to do these techniques. I don't want you to just save these uh, documents and never use them. OK, I am so sorry, guys but the dog is barking. <laughs> um, I want you to give these a try. So um, I definitely want you to, um, I don't want you to just buy the stuff. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do, let me get to talking here. I've got this, we'll move this out of the way. I'm using the stamp set, Blossoms in Bloom. Now, a lot of you know that so many stamps are retiring. And so many supplies. <laughs> so uh, some of the things I'm showing you now, you may not ever see again. So if they're on your wish list or you want to purchase them, you do need to get them before they are gone. Thank you, Lavina. It's perfectly fine, she says, to have a dog barking in the background. He wants to join in on the fun. <laughs> All right. So the first thing we're going to do, and I'm using my Simply Scored for this because it makes it so much easier. If you don't have a Simply Scored, then you could use your paper trimmer for this technique, okay? When I do these techniques, I try really, really hard um, so that it is more generic and more evergreen. Like, I don't know how long Stampin' Up's going to sell this um, uh, Simply Scored. I will be really sad if they took it away from me. But anyway, um, so I'm going to start scoring and I'm going to score at the half inch mark. And for some reason, because that's so close, it is hard. So really hang on to that piece of paper. And then I'm going to score at the one inch. One and a half. Super easy, right? One and a half. Two. Two and a half. Oh, Inek, you couldn't order sweet sorbet yet? Oh, I'm so sorry. You know, our global shipping crisis is a real thing. It is so frustrating. I think we're all so spoiled. We're so used to, we order something, we get it. And then when we don't get it, it is very disappointing. Or like, even like to get like results back from a test or something. You're like, I don't understand why it's taking so long. And it's like, well, because of the shortage of workers, like, what are these people doing? How come people are not working? So if you noticed, I turned my cardstock 90 degrees. And I am now doing the same thing. I'm scoring at the half inch, at the one inch. 
Um, yes, Debbie. Um, Enoch lives in, or Enoch, I think I've been saying your name wrong. Enoch lives in Europe. So the European market um, does not have all of the supplies that the U.S. market does. So that's what she's talking about. So again, I'm just continuing until I completely fill up my layer of cardstock. And this is basic what um, that I'm using. I'm just filling up the whole thing with one half inch. Okay. So um, <laughs> Renee Paris, she says that people aren't working because they're becoming YouTubers and getting rich. Oh, if that was only true. If I was getting rich off of YouTube, <laughs> Um, I do get paid off of YouTube, but I'm not rich from YouTube because I'm not rich. <laughs> All right. I do love my Stamparatus for this technique. You don't have to have it. However, it will make your life easier if you don't like the first way it's stamped. Sorry, I'm getting my ink pad. So I have my stamp set here. Okay. Oh, y'all can see my light up there. How fun. And I've got my cardstock. Now, if you'll notice, one side is raised and one side is, um, what do they call that? De embossed? Embossed? De embossed. In order to get that tile look, you want to stamp on the side that you actually did the scoring, like the top side. Okay. Um, no, Brandy, it is just the regular. It's not the thick. You could use the thick, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so you want to use the side that you actually scored on. Okay. Some of my score lines. That one doesn't look all the way. Oh, there it goes. It's just the light hitting it. So you want to stamp on this side. Recess. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. You know, sometimes, I don't know. Is it getting old? Words just fail me sometimes. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take my stamp and I'm going to place it where I want it. And I always like to line things up with the grid, the grid lines. And I know that my stamp is pretty big. Scooch this, scooch this over just a tad. And I'm going to pick it up. Valley side, mountain side. We are using the valley side. There you go. Well, hello, Jeanette from Leander, Texas. You're just right up the road from me. I'm in Kyle, Texas. I am using Poppy Parade. We're not old, we're vintage. <laughs> oh boy, I tell you, it's like, and some things come to me and I go, where did that come from? Like, why did I think of that? All right. So I'm just really giving this a good inking up. Um, great to learn with like minds. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So now we're going to stamp. And I'm using this little, you know, you can, you can even use a hockey puck. Um, it just helps. This is called a Little Debbie, a Big Debbie. I don't know. It's on Etsy. Um, a friend sent it to me. Um, it just came randomly in the mail one day and I was like, well, where'd that come from? I didn't order that, but it's really cool. Okay. So as you can see, my stamping didn't get completely done. So I'm going to do it again. I want bold flowers. Well, hello, Lynn. We're so glad you popped in. All right, I'm just making sure that nothing moved. I'm so glad you're here, Denise. How are you? Denise has had a time of it. I hope you're doing better. <laughs> Mary Yates says she's getting very vintage. Amen, sister. All right, I'm liking that a lot better. Although right here, let's do a little pressing. Okay, and that is our technique. Look how fun that looks. Doesn't it look like we stamped on tile? Okay, so a lot of you may already have that stamp set. You already may have blossoms and blooms. 
and you're like, oh, I can't think of anything else to use that stamp for. I just gave you something. There you go. Cindy says that she started using her grid paper more and it sure makes a crafting difference. Yes, it does. All right. I know that this seems, let me move this out of the way. I don't want to ink it up. Okay. So that was our first technique and I'm going to need this ink pad. So we'll just leave it open. And we'll move that out of the way. Our next technique. So what I was trying to say while I go, see, I get off on something else. As you're watching the replay, <clears throat> I will have the uh, timestamp below the video. So if there's something in particular that you want to see, you could fast forward to that time on uh, whatever it says for that technique. So we just did the faux tile. Uh, Marilyn says, I made the Debbie with a candle lid felt piece and fun jewels. Well, there you go. There you go. Our next one is called the ghosting technique. OK, um, there's another technique called a shadow technique, and it's similar but different. So if y'all want to see the shadow technique, I'll show it to you. All right. Let me get everything out. I am using art gallery for this one. Denise says she's improving, still can't walk on the ankle for four weeks, trying to figure out stamping while sitting with her leg elevated. Poor Denise took a trip and fell and had to have emergency surgery. So she has been laid up. Bless your heart. And I'm so sad. Your trip was spoiled and all of that. All right. So I'm using Poppy Parade again. And I have Mossy Meadow. Okay. So we've got those out. And I'm going to need my cheapest washer and dryer that you can buy. This is my stamp and scrub. Uh, Karen says she has been doing paper crafts, um, card scrapbooking since the early 1900s. The Stamparatus and the Stampin' Up! Paper Trimmer are the two best tools I have ever purchased. What a great testimonial. Thank you for that, Karen. All right. So as you can see, I messed up my craft white pad. <laughs> I drug, I was trying to add some uh, craft white to the edge of a Knight of Navy card. Mm -hmm. That's what happens to it, but it's fine. It will still do its job. Let me show you the card. So can you see the ghosting effect right here? Yes, Lynn, you can make all those tools yourself. Um, you, If you have wood stamp blocks, like you said, uh, you could make some uh, glue like a handle on it. Absolutely. All right, we're going to get out our paper piercing mat because we are using photopolymer stamps and we want to make sure that we have that good cushion that we like. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, now this is a two-step stamp. I'm only using this one right here and I'm going to ink up. And, you know, the craft ink is very sticky so it may even pull your stamp off. If your photopolymer stamps uh, come off the block, um, you can take them to the sink and put a little bit of hand soap on them and act like you're washing your hands. Well, it doesn't hurt to wash your hands at the same time and get those clean again and they will stick to the blocks. Lynn says, I love my new Stampin' Up! cutter. It makes card making so much easier. Best thing I bought, and I have other cutters. Wow. Awesome. Thank you, Lynn. Thanks for that testimonial. That is so cool. All right. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to stamp more to the left of my crumb cake layer. Oh, it sounds like Debbie has had the same problem. And I'm really um, pushing and giving this uh, ink ch a chance to really get into that crumb cake. Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to take the stem and I'm going to do the same thing. And just going to stamp right there. I always think that my head is going to get, yes, Sharon, alcohol, baby wipes, uh, we'll clean the stamp. Also, I have been known, because y'all know I just keep my hand sanitizer on the craft table. I'll even squirt some of that in my hand and rub those stamps. 
just make sure you rinse it. They say, you know, I don't know who they are, but they say that you should rinse the alcohol off of the photopolymer. All right, so we're done with our craft wax. So we're going to close this up. Um, and then we need to clean the stamp because we have to use it again. So I'm just going to spritz a little bit of my Stampin' Scrub. Spritz a little bit of Stampin' Mist on my Stampin' Scrub. See, there we go again. The leg of your jeans help as well. You're right, Mary. <laughs> you know, a little bit of huffing and you wipe them right off on your jeans. Um, anything just to get them sticky again. They just get dirty from use. Um, so I'm just really cleaning this stamp. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the stem. Y'all are talking about how to make the, the Debbie. So what is the Debbie? Why is it called that? Is that the person who first invented it? Why is it called the Debbie? Um, okay, so now we need our colors of ink. And now what I'm going to do, I cleaned that really good, right? I'm going to take and I'm going to decide where do I, how much ghosting do I want to see? Do I just want to see a little bit? Do I want to see a lot? That's too much. But you can kind of decide how much you want to see. And I've kind of decided. And when I pulled that up, I don't think y'all can see it on here. When I pulled it up, I did get some of that craft ink on there, which reminded me. Oh, goodness. I'm so glad I did that. I got craft ink on my stamp. You need this needs to be completely dry before we do the next step. See, I think I need to quit reading the chat because I'm getting off hand. I even forgot to mention my friend Michelle Batson. Good gosh, what is wrong with me? Michelle is our moderator tonight and she helps me <laughs> try to stay on task. Um, she helps me during the live to answer any questions y'all might have. If you have a question, you can type the at sign and start typing Michelle Batson's name. Um, if she can't answer your question, I'll answer it at the end. She'll flag me and I'll be able to um, I'll be able to uh, answer it. You could use your stamp apparatus for this technique and then just move the cardstock a little bit. Um, absolutely, I've done it both ways. So I'm gonna you, go ahead and use my heat gun to get this good and dry. The Chucky tool. Okay. From Gina K Designs, okay. That answers that question. I'm just going to touch it. Yep. It doesn't take long for it to get dry. I mean, guys, if it's not stamping up, I don't know what any of that stuff is. I just, I just don't. <laughs> okay. So we need our, it was first made by Chuck Meadows who sent it to Gina K. Little Debbie is a copy made by a woman named Debbie. There you go. Solve that. All right. So we're just going to ink up with Poppy Parade. And I can see where my stamp was while ago. But yes, you certainly could use the um, Stamparatus for this. And all you would do is move the cardstock over a little bit. He didn't want to manufacture them. So it has been a free for all. Oh, I see. How wet should the white ink pad be? So it needs to be good and juicy, needs to be inked well before you stamp, but then it needs to be completely dry before you do the second stamp. All right, so now we're just adding our two-step right here. The, the Texas two-step. <laughs> okay. And then we have our Mossy Meadow. And I don't have a whole lot of choices with the stem because it definitely needs to match up to my colored flower, but I'm still, I still have enough freedom 
to give it a little bit of a shadow. And since these are clear blocks, you can see exactly where you're stamping. There we go. That is our, our ghost stamping technique. Okay. Cheryl says, loving these techniques new to me. Yay. I'm so glad. Who else is... Who else has never seen the ghosting technique? Actually, that technique got added to the list by one of y'all. Someone emailed me and said, would you show the ghosting technique? I told y'all months ago, if there is a technique that you want to be reminded how to do whatever, send me a message and I will do it. There you go. All right. What is our next one? Our next one is the herringbone technique, okay? Dawn says that this was new to her. Beautiful and not difficult at all. You're right. This is my first time seeing the ghosting technique, says Kay. I chose the stamp set Peaceful Moments for my greeting, okay? Now let me show you my card. And are y'all like me? Do you just keep all those strips and you go, one day I'm going to do something with that? <laughs> well, today is the day, my friends. Here is my card. It is a great technique for your book when this gets out of control. If my friend Marty Chambers was here, she would know that I, after a certain point, this has to go in the trash. You're, if you're not going to use it, you're going to have to throw it away. Okay. We just can't keep everything. I'm so glad that y'all learned the ghosting technique tonight because so many of y'all have never seen it. All right. So we have our basic white layer and let me pick this up. You can start this several ways. Okay. This is how I like to do it. Um, well, I'll just show you like you could either start here or you can start up at the top, whichever way you want, okay? Um, Uh-oh, Cleon says that her picture's a little fuzzy. Am I fuzzy to you guys? All right, so I'm going to start at the top because I do have some smaller pieces here. And, oh, Michelle loves the peaceful moment. She uses it a lot. I'm just going to add some glue just like this. And then I'm going to kind of stop. Using the liquid glue helps you get this technique, um, helps you with this technique because, let's see, let's switch to black. You can butt those pieces of cardstock right up together, okay? Uh-oh, Mary Yates says her contacts are fuzzy. Am I fuzzy? Melody says I'm clear. I, Enix says I'm fine. Okay, good. All right. So then I'm going to switch to white and we're just going to continue. Okay. A lot of you have done this technique. I know you've seen it, but a lot of you have done it with the designer series paper, mm -hmm. but we all keep, you know, when you're cutting your cardstock, you always have a half an inch left. Always. If you're cutting to do layers, um, <laughs> I should not read the comments. Mary Yates, Mary Yates says if she blinks, I clear up. Mary Yates, go change your contacts, girlfriend. All right, so we're just adding these and we're just butting them up against each other. You could even spread them out and have a little bit of spacing, but I think that's too hard. We don't do hard. We don't do hard. All right, so let's add some more glue. And we kind of decide where we're going to stop right about here so that we can take it in another direction. So I know I need a longer piece now, so I'm digging through my pile. And, oh, Starla has not seen this before. Yay! I think I want a little bit more glue there. Okay, I'm just thrilled that I'm teaching y'all new stuff tonight. That's awesome. All right, I think I need a longer piece of my basic black. My hands have a little bit of sticky to them. I'm thinking school colors in a graduation card would be cool with this technique. You're so right, Dawn. Or what about a wedding card? You know, everybody has their color themes. Um, I think that would be fun. 
Okay. Do I want to do one more? Let me see. Let me look at it. And this is where you start making decisions. Am I ready to start coming off of it? Nope. I'm going to do one more. Okay. There we go. Now we're going to start coming off of it this way. And I like to just go right here to the corner. I don't know. Just a habit. Just my way of doing it. I don't know. And I think I want, do I have a small piece of what? No. All right. We're going with what? We're going to go right here. I know. You know, we're, Stampin' Up! doesn't always have graduation stamp sets, you know, all the time. So coming up with the school colors is key to those kiddos. They love that. So what a great idea. All right. So now we're going to come in with, nope. Yeah, we will. we got to eventually use this. We're just going to butt these right up against each other. The liquid glue gives me that wiggle room I need. And let's do black. You want to use up your shorter pieces first. So this is called the herringbone technique. I could have done it in a V shape. That is truly a herringbone, but it's really any way you want to do it. I am using regular white cardstock because that those were the strips I had. Um, you can't really tell that there is a difference once you rub your finger across that there's a difference in the thickness. It doesn't really matter. Well, Narcy, let's see. Is it Narcy? I'm so glad I'm teaching you something new. All right, so we're back to white. And actually, where's my snips? Oh, they're right here. We're just going to cut a piece of this off because it's got to come off eventually, right? And you may have some glue that has squished out. And then this part gets a little tricky right here, but because, let's see, what, what color do I want? There we go. Because I've been cutting on pieces, you start looking. Could I do that? No, nope, we're just going to do this. Okay. Now we're ready to do the other side and finish this up. Okay. We're going to alternate. We're going to follow this. I'm just going to follow the same pattern going back. Whoops. Trying to butt that up and I went too far. There we go. And then we want our black. And then, I don't know, I could use this little strip. Okay, we are just about done. And again, another paper saving tip. I'm just going to cut this piece off. Do y'all keep those half inch strips? strips? And was I just kidding when I said that? <laughs> Don't lie. Don't lie because I know y'all keep them. And like, one day I'm going to figure out something to use that with. Uh, let's see. Want another piece of white? Just a little bit, except we need it straight. And then we're going to end with, mm, we need black. This is a really fun technique, and it really is a great way to use up those strips. 
See, Sim stamping simply with Maria. She says, oh my gosh. Yeah, I keep it all. Yeah, I know y'all do. I know you do. So your fingers do get a little sticky. So as we talked about, see, Michelle keeps hers. Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad I did this technique, Michelle? <laughs> so Brandy keeps hers because she's done a quilt patch card. Mm -hmm. Mary Yates says, yeah, then I forget them and then start another folder and then find the other folder later. There you go. All right. So I use a little bit of hand sanitizer to get my hands a little bit less sticky. And then we're going to move all this out of the way. Picking all these up. Well, hello, Dana from Nevada. We're so glad you're joining us. All right. So now we have the back side. And we're just now, I will tell you, you'll need to clean your snips after this. And I clean my snips with um, undo um, or whatever y'all clean your snips with because it will have some of the glue on it because it does kind of squish out. So we're just trimming these off. Pretty easy right? It's an easy technique. And really, guys, that's what techniques are. They shouldn't be hard. Renee says she knows a lot of ways to use her scraps. Problem is I never get around to doing it. <laughs> Renee, you're a mess. You are a mess. I like to use the snips because they're a thin blade but you could use any scissors that you use. That thin blade gets right up against the edge of that cardstock. You certainly don't want to use your good scissors with all this glue. Okay. There we go. How fun is that? You could even have it going this way. Oh, I think I'll make a card that way. Then you have two different versions. Mm -hmm. There you go. Hello, Essie from Scotland. Yes, we all have scraps. Sometimes they're the best bits. Absolutely. I just love that we have people here from um, all over the world stamping with us tonight or watching me make a mess stamping. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm so glad y'all like that technique. Now, I do have a little bit of glue on top, but that'll just rub right off. Or um, you could use your um, adhesive eraser, which Stampin' Up! used to sell those. I don't know why they quit. I guess nobody, I guess people quit buying them. I don't know. All right. What is our next technique? Rose says, another great look. Hello, Susan. We're glad you're here. The faux porcelain technique is another one that one of y'all asked for, mm -hmm. the faux porcelain. I had never heard of it, and I'm like, oh, I'm up for the challenge. You tell me something, and I've never done it before. I'm in. I'm in. All right, so what are we going to need for that? We're going to need a stamp set. The stamp set I chose was Love and Happiness. Um, and... I know that I'm also going to be using an embossing folder and I chose the Flur the Parisian Flourish 3D embossing folder, which I'm really sad that this beautiful folder is not going to carry over because I love it. I think I use this one more than any other embossing folder. I use it so much that I've started to crack it. Yeah, I didn't know that would do that. <laughs> All right. So as I show you the card, I really want you to try to see if you can see the porcelain look, okay? I didn't just, um, how do I say it? I didn't just ink up, I mean, I hope it comes through. Can you see the shiny porcelain look? Such a simple, elegant card. Celebrating your anniversary. But the reason that it's porcelain is because you need to use a shiny piece of paper, whoops, 
a shiny piece of paper to do this technique. So I used photo paper. Okay. Now I, I cut the photo paper, you know, it comes eight and a half by 11 and I cut it into four pieces. And my tip for y'all, I always try to give y'all a tip on the technique sheets. My tip is go ahead and do four of these, get four of these done at the same time. And then as the occasion comes up, then you can add the sentiment. So maybe this is a wedding card. Maybe this is a wedding card. Wouldn't that be pretty for a wedding? Just change the color to their wedding colors. Um, yay, y'all can see it. I'm so glad because in person, it is absolutely gorgeous. So thank you to whoever, I can't remember your name, who asked me to do the, the faux porcelain technique. Now I chose to use um, crumb cake. So I want to show you the difference. So I did a couple of them and I hope you can see it on the camera. I used very vanilla and then I used the shiny photo paper. You can't see, oh, there we go. Can y'all see it? The vanilla doesn't shimmer. It doesn't shine like porcelain. Okay. This does. Okay. Lavina says she's going to make this for an anniversary card. I'll be making next week. So the porcelain look comes from the shiny paper. Um, and that's just another one I did. I've got, I've got three of these ready to have um, ready to go whenever I need them. So we're going to need to ink up. This is the best group ever. Glad you're here, Beverly. Thank you, Kate. Thank you for welcoming her. Cut the photo paper from the back. Oh, yes. Good tip. You want to cut the photo paper from the back so that it doesn't dull your blades. Good tip. Um, we used to sell glossy cardstock and huh, why don't we sell glossy cardstock? I could do so many tips. I could do so many techniques, but now we, we can use our photo paper. So I'm not totally sad. All right. So we're going to ink up and we are inking up the top part, which is the one that has the logo. Can you use glossy cardstock? Kathy is asking. Yes. If you have glossy cardstock, absolutely. I don't have it in anymore because Stampin' Up! hasn't sold it for quite a while. All right, so I want to ink up my um, folder. Whoops, let me scoot that down just a little bit. And I'm really going to add a lot of ink and really kind of do a little wiggle, a little twisty wiggle there to make sure that I'm getting everything good and juicy inked. Is that a word? Juicy, yeah, juicy is a word. Foil paper. I didn't try it with foil paper because everything I, you know, I do all the searching for y'all. I go to Google and I go, how do you do that technique? I didn't see anything done with foils. Barbie says it's from years ago. There you go. All right. So I'm just going to place this here. And we're going to close it up and we're going to get our stamp and cut and emboss out. Nope. Need the handle this way. Oh, let's scoot it up just a little bit. There we go. Uh, I wonder what it would look like on pearlescent paper. <gasps> oh, thanks, Renee. Now I have to try that. It might work on the pearlescent. Oh, can I grab that really quick? We should try it. Do y'all want me to find it? Let me get my pearlescent paper. I think that would be really pretty. It'd be fun to see what the difference is. All right, so we're just cranking it through. And there's Harley again. At least he's outside. Yes, yes, yes. Why do I ask y'all anything? I know what the answer is. I am so silly. All right, I'll get my pearlescent paper. Y'all have to give me a second. And there we go. Gorgeous. Can you see it? Oh, I see it. Yay! It's so pretty. All right, let me get it.
Okay, we have the pearlescent paper. Can y'all see it? All right, let's do that again. It's such a pretty technique, guys. Aren't y'all happy that I'm giving y'all this technique book idea? You know, you have all these things to refer to. You're like, oh, I need a wedding card. Oh, I need a graduation card. Wait, Sharon did something for the graduation card. Let me look that up. You got your little reference sheet. Now, how do you get those PDFs? We did not discuss that. You can get them free during the month of April with a $50 minimum order on my Stampin' Up! website, or you can purchase the tutorial in my tutorial store. Um, the link is below the video. Don't go anywhere now because they're not there. They will be there um, when the live is over. Oh gosh, look what I did, y'all. See, I got to talking. I did the wrong side. Well, we're going to have both sides inked. <laughs> Um, at 8 o'clock tonight, my blog will go live and you will be able to get the technique tutorial for purchase on my blog. And if you haven't signed up for the retreat while you're over there on the blog, go ahead and do that. You know, two birds, one stone. Um, but yeah, I, um, I will email you starting tomorrow. If you have placed an order during the month of April, I will email you the PDFs for the April Technique class. It's my way of thanking y'all for choosing me as your demonstrator. All right, time for the magic to happen. Would shimmer white paper work? I'm sure it would because it's got that shimmer. We want that shiny. All right, here we go. We're going to compare the two. Oh my gosh, you've got to be kidding. Oh my gosh, can y'all see it? Now this is a totally different look. Look how it didn't take the color of ink as much. Look at that. I think this looks like more like porcelain. <laughs> wow. Let's see what our other side looks like. Well, that's not bad. It's just not porcelain, but it's pretty. There you go. It's so pretty. I'm so glad y'all made me do it. Absolutely stunning. I'm going to add this picture to my blog because that is that is with the pearlescent paper and it is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, wow. See, we make a good team, y'all. Y'all tell me what to do. Y'all say, go do that. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. Let's see where we're at. Whoops. Picked up my paper. Oh, I think this is the last one. Is it really? Have we? Ha oh, we have had that much fun. The faux watercolor technique. Mm hmm. Yep. Loving this one. Super fun. Who of y'all? How many of y'all think? Oh, I'm not an artist. I can't watercolor. Well, you will be after tonight. I promise. I'm using hand penned. That is not retiring. <laughs> oh, that's that stuck to my. Um, and, and I'm using some interesting tools. Q-tips. Mm -hmm. Let's get all of our colors out. Move all this over. This is a super fun technique. Oh, we need our, where'd I put it? Here it is. We're gonna emboss first and we're embossing white on white. Okay, put all that over there. And I know we don't sell these anymore, but I have to get the static out. 
If you don't have an embossing buddy, you could use some cornstarch in a sock. And I'm going to ink this up upside down. Yes, the ink is crumb cake on the faux porcelain. All right, so we're just going to stamp right here. Hand pinned Barbie. It's beautiful ink, a beautiful stamp set. I am so happy now. The paper is gone. Paper will be gone. May 2nd is the last day to get anything if there's anything left. There's a lot of things that are already sold out. Um, some things are on sale. So that's been, you know, the things, um, those things are, are, they're gone. If they're on sale, they're gone. All right. So I'm using the white emboss powder. We're just going to pour this all over. And I like to give it a little tap. I'm going to make sure all that embossing powder gets everywhere I want it. And then we're going to grab this. Just doing a little bit of embossing. Really want to melt that powder. Y'all don't get to see the wow factor because it's white on white. <laughs> This is such an easy technique and everybody's going to go, wow, did you, did you hand watercolor that? And you're going to go, yes, I did. I sure did. <laughs> All right. We're going to get out our fancy tools. You could use a paintbrush. You could use anything. The reason I chose the Q-tips is because my image is really detailed and small. I'm using my favorite colors, Granny Apple Green, Melon Mambo, and Daffodil Delight. And we're going to start with the green. And I'm just rolling that Q-tip in the ink. Uh, the dryer sheet is on my list. But you know what I'm struggling with? Stampin' Up! didn't give me any glitter for those that dryer sheet technique. Don't I have to have glitter for that? That's the only way I've ever done it. All right. So I'm really adding a lot of ink to my image. And I know this is kind of tedious, but y'all have to see the whole thing, right? I just found that by doing the leaves first, I didn't try to color a leaf the color of a flower. And I know it looks kind of blobby because my Q-tip is not pointed and getting all into it, but it's going to be beautiful when I'm done. All right. Any other leaves? Yes. Where's the other one? Right there. And so we got those two. I'm looking at my picture here to make sure I didn't miss one. Okay, I think we're good. And then now we're going to do the Melon Mambo.
I'm glad y'all are chatting and talking amongst yourselves. <laughs> You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use the other end. Getting a little fuzzy on me. I wish that I could speed this part up on the video, but I can't because we're live. I should have done one ahead of time, like part of it. Almost done, guys. Okay. Now we're going to use Daffodil Delight. We aren't going anywhere, Renee says. <laughs> and we're going to do our centers. You know, coloring is so relaxing, even with 286 people watching you. <laughs> okay. Now I see that I got a little smudge of green over there. I'm going to try to fix that before I do the next step. And y'all know who I'm going to do that with. I'm going to use my mono eraser, my ink and pen eraser. Let's see if we can get that off. Love it. Makes me look so professional. All right, so now I'm going to use the water painters. And um, I need to get the water started in the barrel. Lavina says, we are here for the long haul. I heard my dinner timer go off. I told my husband to eat without me. <laughs> yeah, Lavina, you're in California, aren't you? All right. So now we're going to start adding water to that. And as I do that, it starts to bleed out a little bit, and that's okay. This is called watercolor. We're just kind of filling it in more. If we missed any spots with the other, with adding the um, ink with the Q-tip, we're just coming in now and painting. We're watercolor painting. So fun. What do y'all think? Let me know in the comments below if you're loving how this is looking. If you're watching the replay, I would love to hear your comments on tonight's techniques. If you're new to my channel, I forgot to welcome y'all. I would invite you to subscribe below the video and then hit that notification bell. You'll be notified every time I upload a video or I go live on YouTube. All right, so now we need to clean it again. Just squirt a little bit of water, clean that tip off, squirt a little bit of water. All right, so let's do the Daffodil Delight now. Doesn't feel very wet. It's such a cool technique, guys. I'm going to clean that off. I'm so glad that y'all are loving this. And I love it when it goes outside of the lines. Like I said, it's supposed to be a watercolored look. It's not supposed to be perfect. I 
There we go. I am using shimmery white paper. Great question, Lavina. I forgot to mention that. I don't really like to stamp detailed stamps on the fluid watercolor paper, but you could use the watercolor paper depending on your uh, on your stamp. Um, I am using the shimmery white because it does hold up to the water that I just added to it. So very fun, very watercolory. Um, I could keep adding water to that and it would get as light as this one. I think I did go over it a couple more times, but it's just such a fun, fun technique. Whew, we did it. A little bit over an hour. That's okay. We had fun. Y'all made me do something else. So that's why I'm off time. But anyway, I'm so happy that you all joined me for the live. And I do hope that you will give these techniques a try, especially the ones you've never heard of before. You're like, faux porcelain? Really? <laughs> All right, guys. In the next couple of weeks, you're going to start seeing some in-color stuff, some new things that are coming in the new catalog. If you do not have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you need the new catalog, you can request one over on my blog. Um, there is a catalog tab there. Um, I send the catalog to all of my customers who've ordered from me in the last six months, if they still want one. So there you go. All right, guys, that is it for tonight. You can check out my blog. Now it's up. It's already scheduled while I was chatting away. Um, you can go get the tutorial. If you make a purchase on my store, the whole month of April for more than $50 before tax and shipping, I will email you the tutorials for you to print off for your reference book. So Happy stamping, y'all. Let me find my, I'll be able to turn off. I moved everything out of the way. 